Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at writing files with Java, which is pretty similar to reading files. Um, I just want to also point out that if, you, um, if you're watching this on YouTube or Udemy or somewhere, then you can find the source code for all of my free tutorials on Cave of Programming. So if you go to caveofprogramming.com, and at the moment where I've put it is you have to scroll down, it's a bit obscure, to these YouTube um, videos. And let's say we want to know how to write a file, we can go to, um, uh, sorry, read a file, we can look at reading files with File Reader, for example. Or actually, let's take a look at this next one, Try With Resources, because I'm going to adapt this code a bit uh, for this tutorial. And if you scroll down, you'll, you'll see the source code in there. So uh, this, so this is the code that we've, we've used um, in a previous tutorial for reading a file. And writing files are almost identical. So uh, I'm thinking about copying it just to save me typing it. Let's, let's do that. Let's just change it rather than type it all out again. So I'll copy that. And I'm going to use this. I'll show you this using the Java 7 specific syntax, this kind of try with resources syntax. But if you want to use Java 6 or earlier syntax, then just look at the previous example. Uh, let's go back here of, go down to YouTube videos here. And if you look at reading files with file reader, this tutorial, in there I discuss uh, reading files the old way, the kind of pre-Java 7 syntax. And you can take what I'm about to show you in this tutorial and adapt it for previous versions of Java just like this if you want to, but it is a bit more long-winded. So I've got a um, program set up in Eclipse here, and let's just paste this in. So just as with reading files, we need to create a file. And um, now instead of using a buffered reader, we're going to use a buffered writer. And instead of using a file reader, we're going to use a file writer. So it's really that simple. Let's change this to buffered writer. And I'll set that equal to a new buffered writer. And instead of file reader, we'll have file writer. This only applies to text files, by the way. You'd have to do something a bit different if you wanted to write binary files. And then we don't want this stuff for um, reading the file. And I suppose uh, we, yeah, we don't want to catch file not found exception, I don't think. But we probably want to catch IO exception. So I'll leave that in. So now, now we've got the, the outline of the thing, um, but I need to put one um, one more thing in here. Uh, oh no, I don't. I was going to say I need to close the file, but I don't because uh, this try with resources will handle it for me. That's the point of it, that it will call br.close. If you're using previous versions of Java, when you're writing files, it's really important that you close the file. So then you have to call br.close yourself. Because unless you close the file, you won't see the stuff, probably, that you're actually writing to it. But in this case, with this syntax, um, it will close it for you automatically, as we saw, I think it was in the last tutorial. So let's now just try writing some stuff to this file. So the file doesn't exist at the moment, test.txt, but I'm just going to say br. Let's use write, let's use print, um, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I can't actually remember what um, what methods it's got. I think it's got a write method that allow, allows us to write strings. Yeah, let's use that. And we'll write a few lines. So let's say, I don't know, this is line one. And uh, I have another line, line two. And to write a new line, I'm not sure if it works if you put backslash n in, but there's, um, there's in any case, there's a br.newLine method and then let's write one more line after that as well. Let's say br.write and uh, last line. That'll do the trick. And then it's going to be closed. I, I feel like I, I really want to type br.close, but we, I don't, really don't need to because this is, this is going to call that method literally for me, this try with resources syntax. Let's just run that. And we could specify a full file path in here. And if you do that, all the considerations that we've talked about when we were looking at reading files also apply. Like you, if you have a backslash in there, then you need to backslash the backslash. You need to escape it. 
let's just run that so um, I think it ran and uh, I'm just going to right click the project and go to refresh and now here's the file and we double click on that and here we've written some files uh, and actually I forgot to write a new line between two of those so uh, you can see that the, the, the second right there has just continued on the same line so if I run it again it's um, it's just going to recreate this file. I might have to. I was going to say I might have to refresh it, but I obviously don't because it has refreshed. And there's the file that I've created, and it's it's in the project folder, the root project folder, because I didn't specify a full file path, file path, just the name. And obviously, if I had specified a full file path, it will be somewhere else, uh, and it won't appear until you right click and refresh the project either. So you won't see it until you do that. Although it will actually be on the disk. So if you browse to wherever the project is, let's just go to right click that, go to properties and um, it's going to be, if we click resource, it's going to be here, that's where the project is. The file will actually exist, it's just that Eclipse won't show it to you until you refresh the project. So that's it for this tutorial, join me again next time and you can find lots more tutorials and articles on caveofprogramming.com. Until next time, happy coding.